And now it's time for Hobo Reviews with Willy the Hobo. Tonight's review, Disney's Hercules. Oh my god, this is the best movie I've ever seen in my whole life. Give me the immortality and the spoilers. There's this god named Zeus, whom he and his wife give birth to another god named Hercules, who is supposed to be the heir of the gods. Gee, doesn't that remind you of the Lion King, Mama? And there's this brother of Zeus named Hades, who does not want Hercules to be the heir of the gods. Again, doesn't that kind of remind you of the Lion King, Mama? So anyways, Hades and his henchmen decide to make Hercules mortal by making him drink a poison in a bottle. A baby bottle, because you know he is a baby, you know, ma, ma, ma. So then he drinks every bit of drop except for one and thus loses his immortality, but not his strength. So he's still able to play around with the henchmen and throw them aside. He's raised in a farm with a family. Gee, doesn't that remind you now of Superman, eh, mama? This movie is ripping off of two other movies that came before this one, eh, mama? Anyways, Hercules is an outsider, so to speak, because of his super strength. Again, doesn't that remind you of Superman, eh, mama? I mean, seriously, it's like this guy was on dope and decided, let's combine the Lion King and Superman to form this god movie that kind of combines the two together. Anyways... Hercules decides to go off and become a god. So he encounters the Zeus statue. He runs into Philoctes, who's half goat and half man. And is a midget because, well, he's voiced by Danny DeVito, who happens to be one. I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but you get the point. And so he becomes super strong again. And so then he conquers off all these demons that Hades throws at him and becomes popular and famous. But famous comes at a price. He can't be a god because he doesn't have a heart. Doi! However, he falls in love with a woman named Meg, who happens to be working for Hades, but decides not to because she has a crush on Hercules because Hercules has a crush on Meg. But Hades does not like Hercules, but Hades likes Meg. Kind of a weird love connection. And just in time for Valentine's Day, ma ma ma. So then Hercules decides to give up his strength for a day so that Meg can be unharmed. However, Meg is harmed, thus the deal is broken. Hercules sacrifices himself to save Meg and thus gets his super strength back. Because, well, the deal is broken. Then he goes off and kills off the super demons, or as I like to call them, the Lava Man, the Tornado Man, the Ice Man, Comet, and the Cyclops. And so he regains his strength, and thus the only way to complete his immortality path to God is to have a heart. So what does he do? He goes into the pool of souls, grabs Meg's soul, and becomes a god! Then punches Hades into the soul, a uh, uh, pool of soul, where he is to be drowned upon. Well, not really. He might come back. I don't know. Anyways, Hercules goes and puts Meg's soul back into Meg, and thus Meg is revived. Hercules is now a god. He can live amongst the gods, except he decides that he wants to stay on Earth and be with Meg. Really? You're going to sacrifice being a god just so you can be with Meg? I know you got the heart, but come on. You now know you can't be immortal. Anyways, the movie ends with Hercules and the stars and the village people saying, That's Phil's boy! And he's crying and all that stuff. And everyone lives happily ever after. Except for Hades, who, last we've heard, is still drowning in the pool of souls. I, for one, love this movie because it's a child's version of Hercules to get you into Hercules if you're a child. Who is arguably one of the greatest gods of all time. Of course, you can make a statement for Achilles except of his one true weakness, which happens to be his Achilles. This is Willy be a hobo saying... God powers! You got God powers! Oh, come on, up a guy, will you? Come on, God powers! Come on! I want to be a god just like Hercules, only this time I want to be immortal and amongst the gods!